So they're going to be graphing rational functions. Um, this is kind of like an extension of what we finished off the last unit with, where we were uh, solving fractional equations. This is the next step. Now, this is going to be this video is going to be broken up into two parts because it's going to be a little bit long. So, hang on. All right, here we go. First question: We have our fractional equation. We're going to graph this. Okay. So there are seven steps to doing these problems. The first step is once you get these problems, see if you can factor them, and then if anything can cancel. In this case, there's nothing to factor, so you can't cancel anything. So this step you can kind of skip for the first problem. Step two, you're going to find the y-intercept by plugging zero in for x. So we're going to take our equation, we're going to replace the x values with zeros, and then solve for y. So the first two parts we'll get rid of, and then we are left with 3 over negative 2, which is our y-intercept. Now when you're writing down the y-intercept, because you want to write down all this information on the left of your graph as you're, as you're figuring it out, you want to write down your y-intercept as a point. So 0, comma, negative 3 over 2. Now this is going to go on the y-axis, and a lot of students are like, well, how do I graph a fraction? Well, negative 3 over 2 is the same thing as negative 1 half. So it's someplace between negative 1 and negative 2, right about there. Okay, so as we go along, we're going to start filling in parts of our graph. Step 3. Find the x-intercept by plugging in 0 for y. Okay, so for the x-intercept, we're really not dealing with the whole fraction. So this is the whole fraction. We've put 0 in for the y value. But we really only want the top part of our fraction. So it's going to be 2x plus 3 equals 0. We'll deal with the bottom part of our fraction in a minute. Okay, so when you're dealing with the x-intercept, again, you only have to deal with the numerator of the fraction or the top. You solve this for x when putting 0 in for y. So you subtract 3 and then divide by 2, and x will again equal negative 3 over 2. Now this will not be the same where your x and y intercepts are always the same. Generally they are not. In this case they are but in this case, it's just a coincidence. For your x-intercept, again, you want to write this down as a point. So it should be negative 3 over 2 comma 0. And again, you're going to plot this point on your grid. So it's someplace between negative 2 and negative 1 on the x-axis, because it is an x-intercept. Right. Step 4, we're going to find the vertical asymptote. Now this is where you're going to use your denominator of your fraction. So we're going to take the denominator and set it equal to 0, and then solve for x. You'll get x equals 2. Now your vertical asymptote is going to be a dashed line on x equals 2 that looks just like this. Now the reason why this is a dashed line is because you really, in the actual graph, you're not really looking at it, you can't really see it, but it is there, it's a boundary, and you can never cross this boundary when you're graphing. You can't touch it, you can't go over it, nothing. Okay, and the reason being is, if you went through that line, that dashed line, right, at that exact point, which would be x is equal to 2, your fraction in your equation would become undefined because you'd have 0 in the denominator. We can't do that math, so that's why we put this boundary line there so you know not to go over it. Okay, think of it like a force field. You can't touch it. You can't go through it. Step 5, finding the horizontal asymptote. Um, to do this, you're going to take the leading coefficients of your equation. So <clears throat> what we're thinking about is as the x value goes to either towards positive infinity or negative infinity, what's happening with your graph? That's what the horizontal asymptote is kind of guiding you to. Okay. So in short, what you're going to do is you're going to take the leading coefficients. In this case, the leading coefficients are the 2x on the top of your fraction and the x on the bottom. We can get rid of everything else. It just doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so what we're going to do then is reduce this fraction of 2x over x to just be 2. All right? This means that our uh, horizontal asymptote will be at y equals 2. Again, it's going to be a dashed line. All right? Now, for horizontal asymptotes, it is still a boundary, but it's not as uh, um, strict as your vertical asymptote. There are, there are points in time where you can go through a horizontal asymptote. We may or may not see them. I'm not really sure, but if they do come up, we will address it. Okay, so this is again a boundary that will um, give your graphing some guidance on where it can, can and cannot go. Okay, step six. All right, if you were to factor something and cancel something out, you would you end up, end up ugh, you would end up getting a hole. All right, we didn't factor or cancel anything out, so there are no holes. So we can skip this sixth step. 
step seven. Now, step seven comes into play when you have points on your graph, but don't have points on either side of your vertical asymptote. So you'll notice that when you're looking at the grid, you have the vertical asymptote, and you have two points on the left and nothing on the right-hand side. So this is our unknown area. We don't know what's happening to the right of our vertical asymptote. You know, where is the graph going to be? So what we need to do is find a point, just one, to figure out where the graph's going to go through, okay, to give us some direction, okay? So you're going to find an x value, in this case, to the right side of your vertical asymptote. It can anything, be anything you want after 2, so 2 and on up, okay? Now, there are some things you might not want to do. Our grid only goes, our, sorry, our coordinate plane only goes up to 10, so you might want to pick a number someplace between 2 and 10. We... I'm going to pick 5. So we're going to put 5 in as your x term, all right, and then you're going to figure out what the y value is. So if we do 2 times 5 plus 3 and then 5 minus 2, when you simplify all that, it'll give you 13 over 3. So our point on our grid is going to be 5 from the x term that we just made up. We just picked it, okay? It's not like somebody told you to do this. You can pick it. We just decided to pick 5 for this presentation. And then we put that into our equation to find out what the y value would be, which would be 13 over 3. So we're now going to graph that point. It's about there. So 13 over 3 is like 4 and a third. So you go up from the x-axis 4 and a little bit. And then you're good to go. So we have our point now on the right side of our grid, or sorry, of our vertical asymptote. And now we're ready to graph. Okay. So we're going to graph this following the rules of the asymptotes, which means we're not going to go through them. And that's going to go through the points. So it looks like this. Okay, so there's your one example. Uh, part one of this video is going to go through one more. All right, next example, we have x squared minus 1 on the top and x squared plus 3x plus 2 on the bottom. Now, in this case, we can factor, and then there is going to be something you can cancel. So let's show you how that looks. Here's the factorization for... Uh, each of the quadratics. Okay, now you should notice that when you're doing these, um, that you have x plus 1 on the top and x plus 1 on the bottom. These will cancel out. Okay, and you'll be left with whatever's left is going to be the equation we're going to be working with for the remainder of this until the very end. So we have x minus 1 and x plus 2 because the other parts got canceled out. Okay, so now we're going to continue on to step two with just that equation. X minus one and X plus two is the equation we're working with. And now we start step two, which is finding the Y-intercept. <clears throat> Again, you plug zero in for the X's, <clears throat> excuse me, which gives you negative one over two. All right, so writing this as a point, we're gonna have zero comma negative one over two, and then we can, um, uh, plot that point on our grid, our coordinate plane. Okay, step three, find the x-intercept. Again, we really only care about the numerator of the fraction, not the denominator, because the denominator will tell us what our vertical asymptote is going to be. So we're just taking the numerator, x minus 1 equals 0, and solving that for x, which gives you 1. So our point is going to be 1 comma 0. We plot that point. Next for step four is the vertical asymptote. So we take our denominator from our fraction, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. Okay, so now we make our vertical line through negative two. Remember, it's going to be a dashed line. Again, this is our boundary that our graph can never go through. Step five, the horizontal asymptote. Again, we take our equation that we have. We just look at the leading coefficients, which is going to be x and x, and reduce that fraction. x over x is just going to be 1. We draw our horizontal asymptote across the top, where x is 1, and again, it's going to be a dashed line. <clears throat> okay. Step 6. We're finding any holes. So if we go back to our original equation, when we factored and canceled, we canceled out x plus 1. Okay, so if we were to take our canceled factor, so x plus 1, and set it equal to 0, and solve for x, we'd get x equals negative 1. That is going to be the first value, the x value, of our whole point. 
Okay, so our hole is going to be a point on the graph, and this is the x term of that hole. To find the y value of our hole, we're going to take our equation after we canceled, and we're going to plug negative 1 in for the x term. So if we put negative 1 in for the x term, what will we get? We would get negative 2. Okay, so negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, and negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So negative 2 over positive 1 is negative 2. This is a point, okay? So we have a hole at negative 1 comma negative 2. Now when you're drawing your hole on your coordinate plane, you've got to make sure that it is a hole. So it's a circle. It's not filled in. Okay, this is very important. If you fill in the hole and make it all black, like the other points, then it's not a hole anymore. So please make sure it's not filled in. All right, our last step is going to be our sign analysis. So we've got to figure out what is the unknown spot. Well, the unknown area, we have three points on the right-hand side of our vertical asymptote, but we have none on the left. So our unknown area is going to be over here on the left of our vertical asymptote. So we're going to pick a value that we're going to put into our equation. So what values would we pick? You could pick anything from negative 3 on towards negative 10 because that's the, that's the range we have of the values. We're going to pick negative 5. So we picked negative 5, and how do we pick it? We just picked it. There was no like rhyme or reason for it. We just picked it because it's a solid line on the grid. It doesn't really make a difference. Okay. So if you simplify negative uh, 5 minus 1, you get negative 6, and negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And then reduce this fraction, you get 2. So our point would be negative 5 is the x, and positive 2 is the y, and that's our point that we're going to use for our graph. All right, so now we have a point on the left of the x of the uh, vertical asymptote and three points on the right. We can go ahead and graph this. So we're going to graph it by following the rules of the asymptotes by not going through them and going through the points. But pay attention to when the graph goes and it hits the hole. It does not go through like it does with the points. So on the points, the red line goes through the points, but on the hole, it jumps over that one spot. Okay, so make sure your graph jumps over the hole and doesn't go through the hole like it does with the points. Okay, so we've done two of these problems. Um, this is the first part of the notes, and please watch the other video for the other two examples.